Well, shalom to your friends and Jesus and Yeshua. Um, now, Passover, as I said, was a good number of days ago. Um, so today wasn't the day Jesus rose from the dead. It was uh, about four days ago, um, according to the Hebrew calendar. But as you know, we still go by the Roman calendar, which uh, after Hillel II, the imposed what was called postponements and uh, that's why the celebrations are always postponed to the next corresponding Saturday or Sunday, Saturn's day or Sunday in the pagan Roman calendar. <coughs> Welcome to this video um, I just want to talk about some of the findings um, about the Syrian gas attack and the crisis actor Abdul Hamid um, and uh, actually the snuff films that have been found um, to entice the American people into well attacking Syria um, and I think most Americans can see right through this um, you know, Donald Trump already said this week he wasn't sending troops in, and now, after a few more days, he wants to send troops in. So, but what I saw, again, according to what the Holy Spirit, what the angel of the Lord showed me, is that uh, the conflict will begin in North Korea, and all of this is happening at once. Um, so many things happening at once, it's hard to report on them all. But uh, one thing is for certain, that it is genuine Islamic ter terrorists that are probably carrying out um, untold um, attacks. Um, I suppose um, in, in attacking a chemical plant, which I believe there was a chemical plant near the airbase, I'm not sure of all the details, but as I said before, the air base wasn't destroyed, but the chemical plant seemed to be at least damaged, which is a very dangerous tactic because if you're attacking a chemical plant, you're releasing these gases and chemicals into the air, and uh, it's already been happening in uh, Iraq, and uh, we don't want to see something similar happen in, in Syria, because actually Assad has been very cooperative with uh, the, the American government and, and the different governments. So why they want him out is, is a mystery that only the Bible speaks about. My website certainly spoke about it. Uh, the three so-called dictators, you know, um, according to the Word of God that were on my website, um, three of them would be uprooted according to the Word of God. You know, and that was... Uh, um, Saddam Hussein and then the, the Libyan it wasn't a dictator, he was a wonderful leader in fact he was a great leader you know, that the, the, the Libyan Prime Minister was removed you know, he was uh, I believe he was murdered, right? or he was removed, I can't remember which one it was and now you're getting the final one Assad, you know um, that they're trying to remove him and you could blame it on oil, you could blame it on this, you could blame it on that, but um, basically, they're, they're, I don't believe they're targeting the right people, um, and, and there's obviously an agenda behind this, and some people might say that it's Israel, but you got to remember that pretty much all the leaders in Israel are controlled by Rome, they're controlled by the Jesuits, so you got to really understand that that there's an even, even bigger plan behind this. It's not just Jewish uh, Zionists behind this at all. I mean, there's, there's, there's people behind them which they're, they're incorporating a greater plan to bring in uh, this one world religion, one world government type of, type of thing which we know the Bible speaks of um, and to implement the entire world to take a, to take a mark, the mark of his name. <laughs> And we know that that name in Latin um, and all the different languages, English and I believe um, Greek and possibly Hebrew as well, add up to 666 and that's the, the titles of the Pope. 
it's always been the same. Um, and as, as Bible prophecy experts say, that you know the final pope is the, the final antichrist. You know, and a lot of people think that this guy, um, presently, um, Pope Francis, who is a Jesuit, could be him. Could be the the guy to bring it to bring all these false um, ecumenical religions and uh, denominations into into one. You see. And uh, this is why a man must be born again to be saved. If you've not said the sinner's prayer before, I'd encourage you to say it with me. I remember I said it when I was a, a teenager, um, when I was on a holiday um, down in Ayrshire, which uh, Glaswegians go to quite a lot. Um, and there was some American evangelist there and he told me about Jesus and I never really heard it presented in that way before and they, they got us all to say the sinner's prayer with them as we went a walk with them near the beach and it was according to something according to to, to this it was uh, Lord I am a sinner I confess to you that I cannot save myself I believe in who Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of the living God who came and died for my sins at the cross at Calvary, and his blood atones for me. I ask Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior, come into my life, and be with me, and be my Lord and be my King. Hallelujah. Amen. If you said that prayer, whether you're Jew or Gentile, or Greek, or um, Muslim, it means that uh, you're inviting Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. If you've said it with sincerity, if you've said it with a brokenness, if you've said it within the, the confines of your bedroom or in, in a secret place, and, and, and you feel different afterwards, it means you've been born again. It means you've, as the Bible says, confessed. Um, unto salvation you know that when we confess with our mouths the Lord is near us our high priest is in heaven is not on the earth there's no rep representation of the the good shepherd or the great shepherd or um, the king of kings the Lord of lords on the earth but he is represented through his his body the, 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 the Bible calls it his bride also is referred to in some translations as his church, his ecclesia, his congregation, which should be set up according to the word of God. First apostles, prophets, Bible teachers, pastors and evangelists. These that's called the fivefold ministry. And when we're born again and when we pray regularly to the Lord um, he'll identify which of these uh, the fivefold ministry that we belong to. Now the hard part is to, to bring these ministries together because there's a lot of evangelists um, some of them work disconnected from churches, some of them work in association with churches um, there are pastors who, who shepherd people and, and that itself is, is, is a great gift itself according to the will of the great shepherd you know that they are encouraging people to seek the will of God in, in their lives as the, the, the Our Father prayer says your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so the shepherds are really about shepherding people in to do the will of God for their lives as a congregation and then you get Bible teachers who are able to explain how Jesus um, fulfilled the law and the prophets didn't come to abolish them which means that we should live our lives according to faith in him and establish God's commandments in our lives as it says in Romans 3.31 and we do this through faith in Jesus Christ we do all this through faith in Jesus Christ it's not as if you say just one prayer one prayer in faith believing the good news of, of Jesus Christ believing the gospel but that we must continue in faith in order that God um, 
organizes us as a body for the glory of his kingdom um, and that that takes faith every single day to be able to do that and uh, as I've, I've prayed you know for the will to be done uh, and, and people's lives which the Lord has led me to or led them to me um, I can only comment I can only pray afterwards to see if they're actually doing God's will um, and some of them haven't some of them aren't doing God's will um, some of them fall into doctrine which uh, is not into salvation doctrine of men uh, they've been ensnared by these things and only time will tell that but I can usually tell quite early according to the the Holy Spirit will, will show me if they're erring and it is love to show someone if they're going in the wrong direction or if they're in error it's love to tell someone that it's not uh, being a a hateful critic or being hateful of someone else's point of view uh, but according to the Holy Spirit if you speak out the will of God and if you can correct them in love then um, that's all we can do it's up to that person to receive that um, or not and uh, the Bible certainly says there are many who, who, who are with us but were not of us so went out and, and did their own their own thing and there's a lot of Christians like that today. Sadly, I mean, most of the church is 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 gone astray, and a lot of the a lot of doctrine. You know that, uh, of course, uh, Rome uh, changed the law of doctrine within about the third century in the Nicene Creed, um, introduced a lot of paganism to Christianity, and sadly, still today, there's a lot of Christian churches that follow these vain traditions of men. And just how look, just look how unhappy Jesus was with the vain traditions of men during his day that he was on earth to the Pharisees. Just imagine his his wrath at the fact that we've had his word for two thousand years, and we've not been able to sustain it and understand it and preach it as it should be taught and live it as it should live it as we we preach it as well. And. Uh, so that we, we are not hypocrites and if we do fall short ourselves we can ask for repentance you know when our families disobeys as men we know that we're head of the house when our families are, are, are in rebellion against us we can only pray for them but you know we should try to live according to God's standards ourselves um, and I've, I've done that continually um, and you know some a lot of things have been made up um, so as to turn people's opinion and, and as we've seen the Jesuits are experts at that those with the cult spirits are experts at basically changing people's mind towards towards others and you're dealing with demonic spirits they are controlling demons basically <clears throat> um, you just gotta watch out for that you know that, that's one thing that I, I never do I always, I always present the, the message, the gospel message you know, if I'm there to do a job, I'll try and do that job to the best of my ability, whether it be baptism, teaching, praying for someone for a healing. You just focus on whatever God has moved you to do um, according to your prayer life. And that's how we live our lives, according to faith. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just want to look at people's life and judge it. You're not a judge. If, if you judge then expect to be judged by the Lord by your own judgments that you make you know so it's better that you cut people some slack it's better that you pray for people in their situations rather than just stand and condemn them because that's very hypocritical that's what the, the Pharisees were all about trying to find just a little weakness in Jesus ministry or you know just laughing at the apostles until the Holy Spirit came into them and they started doing miracles that's the type of people they were gathered information and used that information against others to their benefit that's the spirit of the Pharisee and you should stay as far away from that as possible um, and sometimes it takes sometimes it takes a while for us to get to know certain, certain people but that spirit eventually comes out and uh, you know we, we got to stay away <clears throat> from people such as that but again, just just been watching uh, some videos down at Speaker's Corner. Jay Smith, 
as he does, taking women down there to preach the gospel. A great man of God. Um, that you know, he's 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 one of the he's a, he's a wonderful man of God. I have met him. But um, you know, he's just saying that if you if you speak out and you criticise Islam, you, you you know you can be labelled as a, a hate preacher or a Nazi. But it's all right for Muslims to criticise Christianity. Sorry for Muslims to criticise and kill and behead, you know, soldiers and uh, that type of thing, and just drive into people on the sidewalk. That's that's okay. That's not a hate crime, you know. But it's wrong to criticise. If you criticise Islam, according to this uh, very left wing uh, society that we live in, then it's wrong, you know, to 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 do that. And and yet, you know, in Islam, it's proven that with, when they take over a nation. According to Sharia law, they execute homosexuals. So all the homosexuals who um, support, you know, Islamic immigration, and they don't support Christian immigration, who are being tortured and killed all around the Middle East, all around the world, and they want to bring in these uh, terrorists. Well, when Sharia law gets gets imposed on on the land, if and when it does, homosexuals will be the first ones to be executed along with anyone who opposes Islam. So that's probably, I would imagine, I would say it's probably the majority of um, the United Kingdom that would oppose Islam. Um, because they're not open to criticism. It's not, it's not a religion that you can, uh, you know, show that maybe Jesus did die and was resurrected according to the, the Quran. The Quran does um, definitely um, teach about killing the infidel. Does it, it, it just says it in plain English or, or in plain Arabic. Never says such a thing in the New Testament if you follow Jesus. Um, the Apostle Paul says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are spiritual to bring down um, principalities and powers in high places. So you must understand that. Yeah, you, you, you can join the real war, which is a spiritual war, which is preaching the gospel and just give the battle to the Lord because it belongs to Him. Or you can try and fight it carnally. You see? And then you can get sucked into these uh, people who are called nihilists, who have no, which, which it does say in uh, the Elders of Zion document, that's the last uh, ones that they will release and nihilists are just ones that totally have no regard for life and that they just want total death and they have no logic at all so you're getting like homosexuals supporting a religion which condemns homosexuals right you get no logic in that but that's that's the type of thing that's happening because they hate Jesus Christ so much there's a hatred for Jesus Christ and it's not because they hated you it's because they hate Jesus. It's not because they hate me or they hate you as a Christian. As Jesus said, they hated me first. And it's because they hate him that they attack, that Satan attacks his, his body here on the earth because he's been cast out of the heavens, remember. So the only thing he can do now is, is attack uh, those who, who believe in and follow Jesus Christ. But the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to him, dear Christian. So don't lose heart. Uh, I just pray for that you're encouraged by some of the videos. And it's, it's very difficult sometimes to face the truth. Very difficult sometimes to preach the truth to a, a people who are so lost and so vain um, in their traditions and have lost the ability to think because of probably this... Uh, digital age that we live in, all the computer games that kids play, you know, um, they're, not, they're not really taught to think at school very much, I know I wasn't taught to think at school very much, if I opened my mouth in class, very often times there was, there was one or two classes that if I opened my mouth I was just thrown out without a warning, so even other children, I was a Christian at that time, other children would get warnings, you see, you get maybe three warnings. Well, if he's disrupting the class, if he's talking, I mean, I wasn't like a, you know, a clown at school. Maybe I was just speaking to some guy sitting next to me, and you know, the teacher would just literally throw me out of their class. 
So it's a hatred that's, that's against um, Jesus Christ. And I've seen that since I've asked Jesus into my life. I've experienced a hatred from people. And I know that that's not, it's not to do with my sin. My sins have been forgiven. It's very important to understand when you give your life to Jesus, it's not the way the church depicts it, that it's this smooth ride to riches, fortune, and everything, you know. When you ask Jesus into your life, understand you're going to be public enemy number one. If you've actually done it in Satan's kingdom, know that you've been sincere about it, and God puts his spirit in you. Be aware that, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be attacked from family, friends, so-called Christians, everybody around you. And, and the thing is, that stirs up um, others to actually um, have a perspective on what God is doing and the, the, the very truth of Jesus Christ, you see. And so it's all within God's plan. And... Um, Okay, so thank you for listening, guys, and may the Lord bless you.